Well, friends, it has been a long time doing this. So let's jump in. I wanted to show you how I truly plan out how we're gonna end the end of the school year. Um, first off, I took notes. I just literally wrote down with five weeks left what I wanted to get done in those five weeks. What was important to me? I believe this is where anyone should start. I talked about in my video on Friday about going back to the beginning and talking about what your goals were and things like that. Everything that I have highlighted in green here is basically everything I know we're gonna do in the summertime. So those are the things that I'm not really too worried about. We'll continue. We do school year round, but I try to make summer a little bit more fun and just a little bit more not so rigid. So we don't do grammar, we don't do spelling, we don't do a lot of writing, things like that. So let's jump in. First up, I always, always start with my monthly. My monthly is something that I cannot live without, guys. It is something that I use every single day. I will not lesson plan all the time, but you bet I will always have a monthly because it's something that is just important to me. I like to be able to see everything in at one glance. So I know what's going on in personal lives, what's going on with the kids' school. Sometimes they're more filled out than others. Sometimes they're not filled out very much at all. It just really depends on the month, but this is where I always start. So I have a countdown, four weeks, five, three weeks, two weeks, and then our last week of school. I never forget our speech days. Awesome was taking a Zoom class that's on here and we have some other appointments in life that's happening. But this is where I start. And I even wrote down like deadlines, which is something I wanna to continue to do next year. But on my note pages, I realized that the kids are both doing a lap book. That needs to be wrapped up here pretty quickly. So I said, by the 21st, I want that done. Um. And so little things like that go on my monthly. So I encourage you, if you don't use a monthly or you feel like you're not a planner, but sometimes you might feel overwhelmed, try a monthly. Don't lesson plan, just try a monthly and see if that helps. So this is my overview. And then jumping into my weeks, I lesson plan for the very first time in forever. Like I could not even tell you. I don't think anything even has a date on it. Easter, I tried. I got three boxes in. So, this was our last week. It was a packed week. But I am using it more of a checkbox system, and then I'll write in what else we need to do along the way or what else we do do along the way. Now, jumping in to how more about how I'm truly planning. It all comes back to my checklist. I have wrote down things that I wanna continue. Our calendar, our math, our spelling. Um, Lily needs to do at least one good solid paper left in her writing, as well as Austin has a couple more lessons and I want him to bust out a paper and I'll grade it and we'll go back and like do the editing process. Um, I want that to get done in the next five weeks. Um, art, I've had talked about too. That's one thing that I wanna add in because we haven't been doing it. So at least, this is like minimum guys, at least a lesson a week. Nature, I'm thinking we'll probably get to every other week. We're gonna continue like the basic readings and ABC with my toddler. And then my bigs started a new grammar this last couple months and I really only wanted them to get to like section two. So Lily's already there. She's done with grammar. And then we're gonna do continue science Tuesdays and Fridays and we may finish that in the summer. It all depends. And then, yeah, and then I write it down. The big one that always gets me is history. I don't know about you guys, but history for me, it's not something that you can always just skip or it's not sometimes open and go. 
And honestly, we were in the early 20, week 22 or 23, and I skipped a lot. How I did that is I literally just looked at our lesson plan for the week that my father's world has, and I looked at what we were covering, what Bible had, what I could leave out, and what I didn't wanna miss. And so I did that. Honestly, I looked at every week up until now, and when I wanted to see where I wanted to stop. So like last week I combined in 28 29. This next week I'm combining 20, I think 30 through 32 is what I have decided because I'm not going to, I'm not going to hit on everything because I'm not going to hit on everything. So in our Bible, I have seen that we have a lot of read aloud time I'll click to like maybe half of these. I won't get to all of them. And I just see who is really important that I really wanna cover, why I wanna cover it. We've been in Philippians 2, and I'm gonna stay there. So I'm gonna cover week 30, 31, 32, all in the next week. And I, I really do, I just go through, we're in Trial and Triumph, which if you have never read the book, it is so good, it goes through people who are um, like historians in the Bible or in history and their life. And I'll see like they have a story almost every day. I'll probably pick three or four and we'll cover them next week. And then I look at the Bible and we're still in Philippians. So I'll look there and do that. And my big kids are just dictating as we are memorizing the first little section of Philippians. Then I look at history. And history is something that we will be covering. Um, we just got to Christopher Columbus and it talks about a new way of thinking in a story of the world. It goes into Martin Luther's list, the Reformation in the new world. So we have a Pope there we'll cover. Um, and I just keep looking and I'll just make sure we very least cover timeline and anything notebooking is the big things that I make sure that we cover. So I'm gonna sit here and write this all out and then when it comes to the math and the spelling and the grammar and everything else, I had just checklisted. it. I write down the big things that I really wanna cover, things I need a notebook, um, but when it comes to my individual kids, last week I just did checklists and it worked perfectly. And that's how I'm gonna plan out. So that puts us at 32 for history and I'm really excited. Like I feel like we're definitely covering what I wanted to cover in history. We might be skimming through it, but that's where we're gonna pick up too. It will be a little bit of review and we can dive deeper into it next year when we pick up history. That is how I'm basically consolidating what I want to cover. And the reasons why is because we will cover all of these again next year going into the school year and history and review. I am so excited for the last few weeks. I have loved, love, love, loved my father's world. And in the next couple weeks, I definitely will have a review on this. It has been something that you don't have to plan. You don't have to lesson plan. You don't have to um, really prep. It is more of an open and go curriculum. However, it is nice to be able to have that. Just heads up. I like to know what I'm going into mentally and prepare for that. So I'm gonna start planning for this. If you guys wanna plan with me, grab your pen and um, your planner and let's get planning. I will say too, my setup is pretty much the same as it has been. You can see on this page, I don't have a whole lot. It's just my Monday and days of the week are still at the top and my subjects are on the side. And that has been working out great for me as well. I am going to use two pages though because we are going to cover a lot when it comes to this week.
Okay guys, there you have it. Here's what my final week looks like. I did a little bit of something different this week. As I started planning out Monday through Friday, back in the beginning of the school year, I used to have like a note section. So this time I just did goals for my kids. I did what were like our daily reading and a section to not forget. Monday through Friday, it's very hard for me to pick certain books or people to study and leave other people out. I have just really enjoyed this as a teacher and learning. I will say it's definitely for older kids. My littles usually check out and go play in the playroom. It can get gruesome. It's about people who, you know, decided to share what they believe in and sometimes they get persecuted and it's not always a pretty thing. So I wanted to share that um, with you guys. I did all of our morning stuff. Right now our morning time, you guys saw, we have these little cards for um, mindful focus. How great is our God? We're still in the Pilgrim's Progress. And then we are reading The Voyage with the Vikings. And um, I just wrote down when we were talking about slave trade and Martin Luther. I only did history Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My girls have speech on Thursday and Tuesday, as well as a math class for my older girls. So I didn't really put anything on Thursday because it's a busy class day for us, as well as I have an appointment that day. Um, and then just the checklist. And as the week goes on, I definitely will add to this. I'll write things down that we actually did, like for my little zipper calendar, ABCs and reading, I might add what my daughter actually is learning about. She's about to cover, my six year old is covering double um, consonants. So like the FF sound or the LL sound. So she'll be heading into that for reading this week. And that's about it. I'm very excited. My son does have grammar, which my daughter doesn't because she completed it last week and got to like her little section two. And I'm really excited. Goals, it turned out to be a really good week. So I hope you all have an awesome week as well. Oh, let's just write 10. And we will catch you Later, if you want to see a day to day, definitely check me out on Instagram. I show up there, hope, usually try to every day. And then I also um, am here every other Sunday and Tuesdays and Fridays. Bye friends.